Welcome, everybody, one more time to another episode of the Sit Rep Podcast. Uh, I am your host, Ariskany, or Ariskany Jim, whatever you prefer. And today we are taking another look at People's General Cold War Mod, uh, produced by um, SSI, originally was the, uh, was the People's General Engine. Since then, the community has been modding the ever-living hell out of this game. And this is uh, one of Robert Mary's uh, mods for Cold War 1955. So Cold War, the mods for the Cold War mods for the People's General System, there are three editions. There's one for 1955, one for 1985, and one for 2000. So we took a look at the 2001 earlier. We had some, uh, some Leopards and some T-72s of the Netherlands and Poland fighting it out in northern Germany. And now today, we are going to take a swing at something a little bit different. Just for fun, totally off the wall, definitely not historical, um, at least not strictly historical, alternate history to be sure, but it's really alternate, it's way alternate. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. Cheese in the house, what's going on Sit Rep Podcast? Tuffy here says, the last thing I watched was the RPG you guys did. Yeah, um, we... So, okay, so the RPG that Tuffy uh, refers to, I think, might be um, HK Ops. That was our homegrown for the community, super modern, ultra modern um, RPG, military uh, role playing. Um, no dragons, no magic potions, no resurrection spells. It was 5.56 versus 7.62 millimeter, straight out modern military. You get shot, you are probably dead. And if you're not dead, you're going to be in a hospital for several months. Um, we tried to take a pretty realistic. Uh, I stress pretty realistic. A pretty realistic. I mean, it was still a role-playing game, so you know the good guys always win. Um, but a pretty realistic uh, look at uh, you know the, the ultra-modern uh, scene from a role-playing perspective. So, but if anyone ever wants to get that thing going again, um, yeah, it's still it's still on the table. And like I said, okay, we are just also joined by Gianna. So we're ready to get going here. Let's go ahead and make it happen. So I made up a scenario. We're gonna go ahead and give it a quick try today. It's called Defend Fort Bragg, <laughs> as absurd as that sounds. So uh, Fort Bragg is a major U.S. Army um, installation over here on the east coast of the U.S., uh, as everyone knows. Um, when you make up a scenario in People's General, you're allowed to create any kind of army you want. It gives you tons of choices. The year that you set for the scenario, uh, the game is very smart in that it, uh, it either limits or unlocks certain vehicles and uh, units and weapons and equipment and so on, depending on what time period that you're gaming in. Um, so, the one thing that you can't really pick is the map. So it gives you a library of like 20 or 30 maps that you can kind of build your scenarios on. And I was just kind of clicking through this. I was actually trying to make something in the Middle East. Um, and I saw that somebody had made a map of Fort Bragg. I cannot vouch for its accuracy. I have never been to Fort Bragg. Um, I was in the Marines, not the Army. So I have no idea what for, how Fort Bragg is laid out. Um, but I'm sure that for today's little, you know, silly game, it'll be fine. So it's yes, defend Fort Bragg. Defend Fort Bragg from who, you might say. Actually, let me get out of this menu. Let me go into the scenario editor first. So yeah, defend Fort Bragg. We're going to edit the scenario uh, super fast. Um, I set the date as uh, May 5th, 1977. So why? Just, I, don't know, I was in a weird mood today. Um, so this is like the classic uh, Red Scare stuff that we would see back from the 60s and 70s. What happens if it really comes down to it and we have Russian troops here in the good old U.S. of A. Uh, slugging it out. It's sort of like Red Dawn the prequel. So let's see how it goes. Again, kind of a silly concept, but hey, we're just having fun. It's Sunday. Everyone just relax. All right, so obviously we have the Soviets and we have the United States um, as our uh, antagonists here. You can set by any country you want. And then we have our scenario set up. So the hex grid's going to go away, so don't worry. Um, but these are the forces that I have set up. And this is Fort Bragg as it appears in the game. Again, I can't, uh, I've never been to Fort Bragg myself. But um, let me go ahead and zoom out to give you... Okay, so this is the larger scale sort of uh, blowout uh, strategic version. Uh, it's got railroad tracks. Uh, gee, I don't know if you've ever been to Bragg, but this is what the game gives me. There's a railroad track here. It looks like along the north side of the base. Um, there's two rivers that are impassable, uh, some lakes. I'm assuming these are the actual uh, base uh, facilities. There's a major airfield here. 
um, that I have uh, set up as an objective hex for both sides. Um, and that's what we're looking at here. The Soviets are mostly deployed here to the north. And um, what they're going to be trying to do is come south and southeast and take some of these American and Soviet objective hexes. Of course, the Americans have to stop them. The game is set in May of 1977. So we're going to be looking at 1977 sort of um, equipment. Oh no. Okay, cool. So here are our Soviets. Um, the Soviets have two uh, regiments of T-64As. These are, again, some of the really badass tanks that you can see in the Soviet Army, uh, the main Soviet Army, uh, like their own um, national army that they use themselves. They would build T-62s and sell them to anybody who wanted them or give them away to states that they were trying to get on their side. I'm looking at you, Syria. I'm looking at you, Egypt. Um, that's how you see a lot of T T-62s in the 73 Yom Kippur War. But the T-64s, they kept for themselves. The Soviets did. These are the tanks that came out in Battlefront's Red Thunder release for Team Yankee uh, a couple years ago. And to my knowledge, these are still the best tanks you can get in that game. I hear T-80s are coming, but these are definitely better than T-62s. They are definitely better than the T-72. T-72 was originally made as an export tank, again, to give away to all of the Soviet Union's friends. Turns out the T-80, that was supposed to be their next generation tank that they would keep for themselves, ran into some production delays. The Soviet Army in Germany needed a lot more of these. So some of the support units in Germany, in Northern Group of Soviet Forces and Central Group of Soviet Forces, wound up being equipped with T-72s. It wasn't planned that way, but that's how it wound up. But the main striking power, the main group of Soviet forces in Germany was always armed with T-64s, later upgraded straight to T-80s. So that's why I picked the T-64. There's also a Shilka in here uh, for each brigade, each one of these two, um, I'm sorry, division, uh, battalion, battalion, battalion. There's three battalions of tanks. You put that together, you get a regiment. Uh, you put this sort of operational maneuver group all together, you're looking at the, eh, Soviets don't really call them brigades, but we can sort of call them brigades. Uh, loosely. Um, it's a reinforced independent regiment. So we got three battalions of T-64s, again a Shilka unit, B-21 Grads, those are the trucks with the multiple launch rocket system, the Cold War version, sort of like the grandchild of the Katusha. You gotta have B-21 Grads in any Soviet army. If you have the Soviets in almost any game, Cold War Soviets or post-war Soviets, and you don't have at least one BM-21 Grad in your force, you're not doing the Soviets right. BM-21 Grads is just one of those units that's freaking everywhere. They're using them today in Ukraine in huge numbers, both sides. That's like the Kalashnikov of uh, combat vehicles. There's there's one in every, every everybody has at least one. Um, and then there's also um, the uh, 2S1. Uh, so it's a, basically the Soviet. Uh, there's an actual NATO name, but I don't remember. This game gives you the actual Russian name, which is nice. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. Uh, the self-propelled 122 is what you can call it. It's self-propelled howitzer um, artillery. And each one of these, again, brigades, so to speak, has one uh, Grad and one um, 2S1 122mm SPH in its support group. So that's one force. This is another force that's more or less identical. And um, that's sort of the two arms of the Soviet uh, Combined Arms Division. And then in the middle, I've got six battalions, so two regiments of motorized rifle infantry. So that 1975 model guards, armored infantry, uh, with BTR-70 um, infantry carriers uh, for, their, for their transport. I know the graphics isn't the best, uh, but it's not terribly accurate, but we do have some Heinz. No, that doesn't look very much like a Hein, but you know, they, they were working with what they had back in 1997. Um, these Heinz aren't that great, but they're the ones that were uh, available, again, in the mid-1970s. So, obviously, the Hind, everyone knows about the Hind, but the Hind can have ten different kinds of anti-tank missiles on it. They change those chin guns three or four times. They change what goes on the pylons. So, when you say, was the Mi-24 Hind a good helicopter, and how uh, powerful is it, well, that's sort of a, of, of a sliding scale. Um, in a lot of cases, because again, it depends on what they, what, it depends on what those Heinz are carrying. Oops. And that's more or less the Soviet, uh, I have a BRDM-1, uh, command vehicle. And that's pretty much the Soviet force. 
they have a supply hex and an objective hex they have to defend back here. That way they can supply their units during the game. Again, a supply and objective hex here. The Americans have an objective hex that currently the Soviets hold that the Americans have to try and take, uh, and so on. Again, the Soviets are mostly on the offensive. I made the Soviets the AI, and I gave them turn one, because they're on the attack. Scooting south into, again, this is what the game says Fort Bragg looks like. I've never been to Fort Bragg, so forgive me if I'm uh, a little off on this one. Um, we have um, some 1970s era 19, uh, U.S. armor. So this is way before the Abrams. We have M48A5 patents, which I have upgraded with some special abilities. Oops, no I haven't. Oh no! Okay, this one's a little bit upgraded. They have one stripe of experience that gives them a little bit of, uh, I basically made them veterans uh, in wargaming terms. And they have the special munitions, um, special ability. These are Sabo ammunitions, so the silver bullet tank ammunition um, that you see everybody using a lot in the 1970s. Well, really, from the 1960s forward. Nowadays, it's pretty much ubiquitous. But uh, Sabo ammunition, I won't get into the whole ballistics discussion, but Sabo ammunition is a big, big part of um, how good a tank is versus other tanks. Yeah, so more M48A5 patents. Again, this is definitely second-line stuff, even for 1975. We do, however, I'm happy to say, have some of these M60A3 patents. Again, one stripe of experience and special ammunition. Um, these are a little bit better. This was kind of the best the Americans had until the Abrams showed up in the early 1980s. Um, the Abrams was supposed to replace, or I shouldn't say the M60A3, was supposed to be replaced a lot sooner than this. The Americans and the Germans, the West Germans, got together in what they call the XMBT-70 project in predictably about 1970. They were supposed to design a joint tank together, um, and that was going to be what, what would replace the M60 patents for the Americans and the Leopard 1 for the Germans. That didn't go so well because the Germans and the Americans could not agree on anything, most importantly, the weapon system. The Americans were in love at the time with their ridiculous M, I can't remember the name of it, but it was a 152 millimeter low velocity howitzer that could also fire the Shillelagh anti-tank missile. Um, this is what eventually went uh, on the M551 Sheridan. This is one of G's favorite tanks. Um, it's fine for a light tank, but for a main battle tank, the Germans were not convinced. The Germans were not convinced that that stupid American missile was going to be an actual anti-tank weapon. They said, we insist on 120 millimeter with smoothbore. The Americans said no. They split. They went their separate ways. They had already flushed a couple billion dollars down the toilet and wasted five years of development and arguing and so on and so forth. And so the Germans went their own way. They eventually developed the Leopard 2. The Americans went their own way and they developed the Abrams with the old British 105mm rifle on it because, guess what, that stupid Schlegel missile doesn't work. And it's kind of ironic, and Germans always got to chuckle out of the fact that by the mid-1980s, the Americans had to go back and say, uh, hey Germans, that 120mm smooth war that you were talking about, um, can we take another look at that? And ironically, that's the 120mm smooth war that's on the Abrams battle tank to this very day. Americans need to learn to listen sometimes. Uh, it depends on who you're listening to and depends on what you're talking about. Well, when it comes to big tank guns on, um, on tanks to kill other tanks, listen to the Germans. They tend to know what they're talking about. They, they came out with the 88. They came out with the Tiger. <laughs> They've always been at the top of that game. Um, so that was a kind of a tangent there. But the point is, this is why the M60 soldiered on way past its bedtime. Uh, the M60 was really long on the tooth, and now it's up against, you know, T-64 armor. So for players who are used to M1s wiping the floor with hordes of T-72s, get ready for some culture shock, because these M60s are up against tanks that are actually better than they are. In the 1970s, the U.S. military was not in a good place. Um, our equipment was half a generation behind, and we had just lost in Vietnam. So be on the lookout for that. Because there are Heinz on the table, I do have some M163 Vulcans, uh, VADs, anyone who's familiar with the Americans and Team Yankee knows what those are, and an M110, 203mm gun, self-propelled howitzer like a big dog. I only have one battery of it, but these are the things that could, if they really wanted to, fire 300 or 20, uh, I think it's a 20, a 20 kiloton uh, tactical nuclear uh, artillery shell. 
how these things shoot for 20 or 30 miles. You see some of the stuff in the north part of Vietnam in the 1970s. Um, really, really, it's an eight inch howitzer. It belongs on a heavy cruiser. And here it is on a self-propelled howitzer. And lots of American infantry. M113s, 1975 model. I did upgrade them with uh, the anti-tank ability because there's going to be a lot of Soviet tanks on the table. I upgraded most of them with a stripe of experience. Holy crap, I thought I had. Okay, some of them have experience, some of them don't. Um, that's pretty much what units I could afford to give them the experience. But they all do have the anti-tank ability. So that increases their heart attack a little bit. Um, one thing... Okay, we do have some uh, Kiwas, because I had a feeling that uh, Gianna was going to come in. So we do have some OH-58A Kiwas uh, on the table. Uh, I lost track of them. Okay, there they are right there. And we also have Cobras, because, again, 1975, so no Apaches yet. I upgraded the bejesus out of these things. This is an extremely expensive unit. This, this one unit wound up costing me like 750 points. But it's an AH Cobra. It's got the same movement rate. It's got special abilities. Um, it has a hell of a ammunition load. It's got tows. Um, it's got the anti-tank special ability. It's got the helicopter special ability. I know that sounds weird, but it's possible to have a helicopter without the helicopter special ability. There are certain things that it can do. Basically, it, it extends its range. It's almost like recon for helicopters. So I made sure to give it that. And of course, a stripe of experience. So we have a small elite force up against a pretty chunky Soviet force. There's just one problem for the Americans on top of all that. This is for you, Marty. I was kidding around with the uh, sit rep team on Skype earlier about this scenario. And I was like, yeah, let's just call it Team, um, I'm sorry, call it Red, Yang, uh, Red Dawn, the sequel. The prequel, I should say. I screwed that totally up. Let's just call it Red Dawn, the sequel. I did it again. Let's just call it Red Dawn, the prequel. And so we have three, I'm sorry, four battalions of VDV airborne troops. So some Soviet paratroopers have already landed behind the American lines. They're about ready to attack Fort Bragg itself. Um, I had originally intended to give them two full regiments, so that's six battalions. Um, but I can only afford four by the time I ran out of points. So let's just say that two... Um, units of VDV airborne were lost in the drop, and that's what survived, and we'll see what they do. I'm pretty sure they're going to just straight out attack to try and get to these objective exits, or take away these objective exits. These ones with American flags, they have to take. The ones with the Soviets, they have to defend. So pretty much this is just to force the AI to attack in this direction. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's the American force, and that is the Soviet force. So, um, I'll go ahead and save it, even though I didn't really change anything. And how about we go ahead and kick it off. Let's see what happens. Defend Fort Bragg is the scenario. I'm going to set the Soviets as the AI. I'm going to set myself as the human player. Now, I haven't really play tested this scenario, so get ready if the Americans get stomped. Uh, I do apologize. It is May 7th, 1977, in some weird perverted alternate timeline. The Soviets have ground troops, God knows how, in the continental United States. Paratroopers have landed right outside of Fort Bragg, and uh, the attack is now underway. Okay, so nothing's happening on the screen right now. That is the Soviet player taking his turn. The game does have, uh, what's the word, uh, fog of war mechanics, so you will not see an enemy unit until it actually appears in your, oh, there we go. Artillery support, okay, the battle for Bragg is now underway. The Soviet paratroopers are getting slaughtered. So that first battalion of Soviet paratroopers tried to attack the airfield. They got caught under defensive artillery support from those M110 howitzers from way the hell over there. Holy crap, that thing's got some range. Okay, so the Soviets are now completed with their turn. Again, we only see what we're able, what we can actually see. So the only Soviets I can see so far are, yeah, sure enough, those paratroopers behind me. One whole battalion has already been wiped out. Another one is in really bad shape. Everything starts off, by the way, with uh, 
uh, with a, a force of 10. They managed to knock out one of my tanks, but they took 90% casualties in return. There was another unit right here that's just been wiped out entirely. So, so far the Soviets are... The Soviet paratroopers are not doing well. However, again, we have two whole regiments of T-64s with mechanized infantry support and Heinz, and Grad rockets, and 122mm self-propelled howitzers coming down out of the northwest. It will get hectic here, trust me. But for now, the Americans are defending that Fort Bragg airfield really, really well. Uh, sit around podcast, I have no idea, does this even look a little like Fort Bragg with this runway, uh, not runway, with this railroad, and this airfield, and this bridge, and these two rivers? Um, I've never been to Fort Bragg myself, so I am trusting the game. They just called the file Fort Bragg. For all I know, that's just the name. But, anyway. Okay, so it's our turn. I'm going to send my, um, OH-58A, Kiowa, to... I'm going to send it forward. Uh, I mean, obviously I'm sending everything forward, but I'm going to send it, like, way forward to try and spot some incoming Soviet tanks. Oh, it spots one vehicle, that Soviet command vehicle, way up here. I happen to just notice the graphic. Um, notice it's not giving me a description at the bottom of the screen, so the game will give you partial information. If you can see an enemy unit, like if I go down to these uh, Soviet paratroopers, it actually says 1955 VDV Airborne. Um, you know, so I, I, and then if I click on it, it actually gives me stats on it, lets me know if they have any special abilities. I made them all somewhat experienced. I made them all veterans, because paratroopers. Um, they have, like, the paratrooper special ability. You know, it gives me all the data. But if I go up to here to this unit, uh, it doesn't give me anything, because I can't quite see it. I know it's there. This Kiwa can barely see it. But uh, that's about it. I can't see it in any kind of detail. Where is my Apache? Or not Apache, I'm sorry, Cobra. I wish it was an Apache. American infantry in this particular scenario, I was working within a budget, so some of them are better than others. I have to be careful about which unit I'm actually looking at. Like this guy here, no experience points. He does have the anti-tank ability, as opposed to this one here. Experienced veterans with the anti-tank ability. Also, these are 62 armored infantry, 1962 pattern. These are 1975. So, yeah, that actually kind of makes sense. These are the more modern infantry with more modern small arms. Pretty much more M60s and so on, but they're not as experienced. These are the old guard. Um, they're a hell of experience, but their actual attack values are, and their defense values are a smidge less. Because, um, again, they don't have the same equipment. Um, this game is kind of... Uh, kind of basic, obviously, it's just, you know, for a stream, it's just for fun, but it can get pretty, pretty, uh, involved if you wanted to. I'm gonna piss off the Russian AI here. It doesn't really mean anything, but, uh, it will make them my rate. It will trigger certain responses in the AI. Here's my air support, because I know there's a high coming. My big dog, uh, Jeez. You know what? This guy loves to steal my objective hexes, so I'm going to go ahead and shell him, even though I can't really see him. I have no idea how much damage I did, so let's do some reconnaissance and force. Nuke him, Rico! Nice! <laughs> That's the end of that! Tanks versus paratroopers. Tanks will usually win, especially in a nice open field like this. Now, paratroopers in built-up hexes against tanks, not so much. But here in the open, yeah, those tanks just stomp them. Okay, uh, now there's really only two Soviet uh, airborne units left, and they're both pretty weak. Um, or I should say one's really weak, the other one's fine. 
So I'm going to kind of leave this to my two garrison units down here. 62 armored infantry and uh, more 62 armored infantry. And I'm going to see what... Uh, hopefully we can just go ahead and send this down. Trying to wrap this battle up so I can send these tanks forward because I know that there are a hell of uh, Soviet tanks coming for me. Make sure you can't retreat again. All right, cool. That's it for the Soviet paratroopers. That was actually pretty pretty quick. Uh, the problem for me is take some Soviet objective hexes. Um. That took, a, that took two battalions of my tanks when I would rather have sent them forward. Actually, three. One, two, three. That's half my tank force tied up in my own rear. Um, which leaves me only a few tanks left to get ready to face off against the Soviet threat I know is coming. I'll put my infantry forward to kind of screen it a little bit. This way, when the Soviets come down through these two sort of uh, avenues here, these two channels, I can have infantry on the wings on both sides with some limited anti-tank missiles. Again, I gave them the anti-tank ability, um, so their heart attack did go up a little bit, but again, it's 1977. I don't think they're packing toes. Uh, they're probably packing like dragons at the most. Um, God help them if all they have is law rockets. But... Uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. All right, so I'm going to send my artillery forward, so it can have those again, those those these two expected avenues of Soviet approach covered for artillery support. And I think that's all my units. Did I not move anybody? Oh, this guy can move after he attacked. Okay, cool. Thank you. That will save me some time. Oh, that was a different unit. Oh no! Can I undo that? I thought I was looking at those tanks, I was looking at my APCs. So I'm pretty sure these are my worst infantry. Yeah, no experience. Eh, they're the same as everybody else. Anyway, no worries. Alright, so I've got a very, very fragile, kind of like an eggshell defense here. I'm pretty much just trying to find the Soviets. There's literally one tank battalion all by, him, all by his lonesome. He's like, where are all my friends? They're coming, dude. They're, they're busy cleaning up my rear area. Soviet objective hexes in my rear, Soviet paratroopers in my rear. I have to finish securing the rest of uh, Fort Bragg itself, it looks like, in this airfield right next to it. And now I have to uh, get ready to face off against the Soviet force. I'm expecting to go mostly down these two channels. I can't completely forget about this side, this side view. They may get cute and send mechanized forces over this bridge, down through this road, and try and get at my left wing. And there are two objective hexes over here to encourage them to do that. So, I can't completely ignore that, but we'll see what happens. For now, all my units have moved. I'm going to go ahead and end the turn and give it back to the AI and catch up on the chat. Night of May 7th, 1977. Oh, Chip Renner, hello, sir. Ben Johnson, hello on YouTube. Hello, Chris on Walkabout Games on YouTube. Man, YouTube is stomping it compared to Twitch. Twitch, you guys gotta get going over there. YouTube chat is kicking your ass. Right oh my god, so Oh, they just wiped out a brigade of my troops. Soviets are coming hard down. Yep, kind of, kind of expected down these two corridors here. Defend Fort Bragg. Gave the Soviets B-42 at the... No, 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 no. I did not give... I'm not that crazy. I didn't give the... I gave the Soviets plenty of artillery, man. Uh, to be honest. All right, so before I start the turn, let me get back to the chat in, uh, in detail here. Um, hello, Brett. Enough, a great sand pile. Giant sand pile. I'm assuming you're talking about Fort Bragg. Um... 
So, uh, Chip, like you were probably hearing, uh, this game gives you a bunch of maps that you can use. One of them was titled Fort Bragg. I've never been to Fort Bragg. I have no idea if Fort Bragg actually looks like this. Um, I'm looking at railroads here to the north, two rivers, an airfield under there you can't quite see right now, and like a little town. Or I guess this is where most of the administration buildings are. Um, I don't really know what the scale is supposed to be or how accurate it is. For all I know, the mod for this game just named it Fort Bragg. Um, the date is uh, now the morning of May 8th, 1977, and we're obviously doing something very um, theoretical here, very uh, tongue-in-cheek. Uh, Red Dawn, the prequel. We are looking at a Soviet tank and uh, I would say paratrooper attack, but I've already wiped out all their paratroopers. Um, and we're going to see what happens with these um, with the rest of this attack. I just got clobbered in the center here. I'm going to see if I can... Uh, Let's see if I can address the situation. Oh my god. Yeah, they need help big time up north. One, two, three battalions of T-64As. Another battalion of T-64As over here. They've wiped out at least one um, battalion of my infantry. Alright. M110s, yeah, the M110s Ben did hella work. They were instrumental in breaking up that first Soviet paratrooper attack. Um, spoiler alert, I really love M110, so it's one of my favorite vehicles. Google search M110 self-propelled history, uh, self-propelled artillery, and you'll be like, oh my god, a risk and he likes them big. <laughs> it's a great piece of artillery, I love it. Alright, but uh, let's get going here. So my Kiwa, I'm waiting for those Heinz to show up. So my key was going to do something. Let's use the key on to sort of suss out what the Soviets are up to here in the center. I'm going to send them right down the mouth of the dragon, so to speak. Yep, there are the grods. There's more infantry and more T-64s. Oh, my God. It says like an attack. I guess there are some anti-tank missiles on there. It has a 7 anti-tank value. I don't know what that represents. But, uh, yeah, sure, why not? Oh, I already passed on the chance. Okay, no worries. I'm really worried about my super expensive um, Apache. No, I keep calling it Apache. My AH-1 Cobra. All right, dude, I spent a ton of money on you. You better friggin' do well. One to six, much better. Okay, I was doing some playtesting before. My Apache was not doing well. Uh, I made it experience, and I gave it anti-tank capability, so we'll see what that does. Yeah, knocked out half a battalion of Soviet tanks in one swing. Can't complain there. Up, oh, and sure enough, my... Yep, my 203s are already out of ammunition. Because they have been doing work, uh, to use Ben's phrase. Alright, so I'm going to bring up some of my tanks. If I can wipe out the enemy infantry that's around my uh, artillery, I can use this turn to resupply my artillery. But you can't resupply when enemy units are adjacent. Adjacent, I should say. So I have to make enemy units not adjacent. Those are M48A5 Pattons versus 75 Guards with BTR-70s. Who do you think's walking away from this little get-together? Oops! <laughs> Alright, now gonna supply these bad boys. Alright, um, I think that's just all S, right? Cool. So now if I, yeah, now he's got four out of four ammunition. They run out of ammunition fast. Unfortunately, the game does not give me tactical loot to fire out of my M110s. I don't think it's very fair. Then again, would we really want to use tactical nukes on American soil? This is Fort Bragg, after all. If what Chip is telling me is correct, if Fort Bragg is just a giant pile of sand, cook it, man. Set off that nuke, see what happens. Infantry Oh, there's the hind. Oh my god, I just totally walked right past the hind. Alright, uh... No, no, no. I don't know if my vats can move and attack in the same turn. Let's find out, shall we? That's 
not what a VOD sounds like, but that's okay. And pine trees. It sounds a little like Paris Island. It sounds a little like uh, Camp Geiger. Well, Camp Geiger is mostly swamp. Camp Geiger, uh, Camp Lejeune, um, North Carolina. A lot of pine trees. All right, now I, I want to make sure I put at least one tank between enemy tanks and my VODs, because that's my only air defense unit. And, uh, okay, now I can see that they shot down some of those hides, now that I'm close enough. All right, so T-64A versus M-60A3 pet with Sambo ammunition. That was not a very good exchange, but again, the T-64 is legitimately a better tank than the M-60A3. The M-60A3 was way past its bedtime uh, by this point. This is what happens when you argue with the West Germans. So I can attack with this unit right here I'm going to move, M-60A3 patents. They're going to move forward and they can attack those T-64As that have already been hit from either this hex on the railroad or this hex in the trees. I'm going to go there in the trees to hopefully give them some extra cover. But that does... Ooh. You know what? Uh, maybe not, because, dude, if I send them too far forward, one, two, three, four more battalions of T-64s are just going to bum rush this fool. Nice. Although, again, I'm taking losses. Holy shit. M48s and M, uh, M10s. All right, so, uh, Ben, if you're still on the stream, do you still want to, uh, moving over to Twitch, LOL. Oh, come on. Um, who wants to command, people in the chat, I'll look at both chats, who wants to command tanks, and who wants to command mechanized infantry, who wants to command, uh, uh mobile artillery, my M110s. I'm pretty sure that Gianna is going to have dibs on this, uh, on this AH-1 Cobra. I'm going to go ahead and give her command of the helicopters because, gee, and if I don't, uh, she'll kick me off the Sitgrim team. So I have to make sure that doesn't happen. All right, so, um, is he already taking the turn? Uh, I think I already moved him. Yeah. Have I moved any other units? Oh, this guy hasn't done anything yet. Oh, boy. Do it. Gotta get ballsy. Attack that Soviet command vehicle. Alright, I think I've moved all my units now. I'm gonna charge the charge. Oh, they haven't done anything yet. But you know what? I think I like them where they are in those trees. They're sort of holding my left wing together. So I'll go ahead and end the turn, and see what the Soviets do. Yeah, there's a lot of tanks out there. Oh, no, no, no! Artillery support! I gotta wipe out that tank before he escapes. Alright, so, um... Alright, Janus Cobras. What are you gonna do for me? Janus Cobras, if you see it on the bottom screen, again, one of the funniest, funnest things about this game, it allows you to rename units. You can build super accurate um, scenarios that way, if you're into scenario gaming, historical scenario gaming, or if you're just clowning around like we are here, obviously. So Janet commands my Cobras now. She's going to go see... I'm going to see if she can finish up this... Uh, please finish them before he gets reinforcements. Thank you. Oh my god.
give them like little scenario names or whatever. Now, it's really fun when you have a campaign going that can last up to 20 games. Because then you get attached to these units, they go with you from game to game, they gain experience, they gain additional attack powers, you give them names, they can win medals. Um, yeah, it gets, it, gets, it gets kind of fun later on. But for now, um, we're just doing a scenario game, so we won't see too much of that. support followed by some tank fire just kill them already Please. god damn it man I'm gonna wind up losing this battle and then Fort Bragg will have fallen and I'll never hear the end of it <laughs> just destroy them please There are no enemy units around me. Elite replacements, dear God, please. Elite replacements, dear God. Oh, I can't. All right, I gotta send in fresh units. Oh, Jesus. Do it, please. Give me a good one. I am not happy about those three. So these are really the five remaining Soviet tank units now. M60 A3 pad. You know what? If nobody else wants it, I'm gonna take it. Task Force Ariskany 01. Or how about Ariskany 66? That's the actual commander right there. I'm sending him into combat. Ariskany 66. Lead from the front, man. Oh, I'm gonna lose my tanks if I do this. No, 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 no. I gotta do it. Oh, please give me a good number on the RNG. Ah, not bad. Anybody else want tanks? Going once, going twice. Uh, welcome to the real stream. Oh no. Alright, you know what? Tuffy Years was one of our first people that logged in for us today. So guess what? Um, Task Force Tuffy Years. Is it Tuffy Ears or is it Tough Years? I've never. I'm assuming it's Tough Ears because he usually uses a uh, a cat in his in his, uh, in his icon or in his avatar. All right, Tuffy Ears. Ariskany needs your support. Ariskany by himself, like a fool, just ran forward and engaged three battalions of T superior T-64s. You got to rush him up and help him from his own incompetence. Help him, please. Tuffy Ears, you are the man. You just nuked that T-64 battalion right off the map. There's now four left. Four down, or two down, four to go. And, uh, oh man, that's pretty awesome. This is gonna be scary. Oh, hell no, not doing it, not doing it. Back up, back up. I don't know why my infantry is so weak. I gave them anti-tank ability, but they always get killed by these, uh... I don't get it. I don't know what's going on there. Did you guys see that, pro that uh, projected kill list? It was awful. Alright, it's not letting my artillery engage anything. Because I guess everything's out of range, which is fine. I will use... I'll resupply. It won't let me resupply. Probably because I already fired. Um, in that case, I will move them forward. So that more will be in range. I'm going to build him up next turn. I'm going to uh, try and save him. Oh no! The Soviets just retook the airfield behind me! Get out of here! Damn right, I'll take my objective packs back. Behind us back here! Oh no! I don't think it'll let me do this. Oh, it will! Shoot down those hinds, please! Nice! 
Did you see that? He sent his command vehicle right there. That's a Soviet command vehicle in his hind, and he w went around my wing, and he tried to snatch up my... Uh, Fort Bragg was briefly held by Soviet troops and Soviet helicopters. Oh, no. 82-inch 4K TV. Oh, no. Tough ears. They must be Marines. Risk me, Jim. Your guys might be Marines. Uh, did Marines ever use the M60A3? Technically, no. M60A1s with an ERA, but uh, they're not available in this game. Um, 82 inch 4K TV. I apologize for the resolution uh, on this game, man, because you're seeing it in its, all of its horrible glory. I sit in a podcast. <laughs> uh, but so far, Gianna, I've got you in charge. If you see it on the bottom of the screen, Gianna's Cobras. And uh, Gianna's key was around here somewhere. Uh, hold on. Uh, where are you? Yeah, Gianna's key was there. If you see it on the bottom of the screen. Um, so we are slowly going through our units, and we're going to start naming units after members of our chat. So, so far we've got Ariskini's tanks, Tough Year's tanks, and um, Gianna's uh, uh, helicopters. The air defense is up, plenty of tanks. I think I'm going to give Ben my artillery um, in, in honor of the uh, that Soviet artillery that he loves. I mean, technically this is American artillery, but... All right, I've now moved all my units. I'm going to end the turn. I'm going to bite the pillow and think of England. Oh, man. This is going to be rough. Hold me. Somebody hold me. No. Yeah, you better run. Heinz are still attacking our airfield. But I'm not worried. Oh. Tank battle. A risky engaged. I took losses. I chased them off. No! Artillery support for Ariskany. Ariskany is dead! Oh no! Ariskany just died! <laughs> the only one left is Tuffy Year 66. Ariskany 66 is down. Down. I just got wiped out by this battalion of uh, tanks over here. Despite artillery support. Oh no! <laughs> Where was my helicopter support, Gianna? What happened? What happened exactly, please? All right, in all seriousness, um, here's Janus Kilos. We have one bolt of ammunition left. Where am I going to put them? You know what? They're going to start tearing up these, uh, I'm tired of these grods. There you go. That was the last one. But it tore up half, uh, a quarter of that grod battalion. Let me move. Again? No. Okay, I don't think so. Um, let me see if I can finish up this. Uh, um, that should work. So I got my VODs. Who, uh, does anyone... Uh, let me see here. Uh, poor comms. Blame it on the Air Force combat controllers. Okay, that's cool. What game system is this? Um, okay, Sid Real Podcast. We went over this. We may have it on the stream. This is another mod for People's General, originally for uh, SSI in 1997, I believe. Uh, and since then, the community has been um, modding the ever-living hell out of this game. There are Napoleonic mods for this game. American Revolution, American Civil War, Arab-Israeli Wars, three different generations of Cold War. Uh, this is Cold War 1955, technically. Um, and then there's also Cold War 1980 and Cold War 2000. So uh, this allows you to play the older tanks that we see here, because I was in a mood for, you know, T-64s and, you know, old, old, old school stuff. Vengeance will be ours! <laughs> Send infantry to the village north. Uh, okay, um, I gotta see which one, which one you're talking about here. Uh, oh, this one up here? Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Get behind them and, and, and make them nervous. The AI is sort of programmed to, uh... Uh, act in certain ways. If I take down infantry, it opens up a road to these objective hexes. And if I threaten these objective hexes, the AI's programming gets nervous. And that's actually, you know what? That's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea. I'll pretty much be losing an infantry uh, battalion, but it will, it will cause the AI to pause for at least a turn. Okay, so um, let me see what's going on here. Amphibious monsters artillery. Okay. 
Oh, I went out of space. Amphibious Monster 8. V8 stands for 8 inch. How about this? Amphib Monster 8 inch. 8 inches of doom. That's 8 inches of artillery battery, guys. Don't get the wrong idea. This isn't that kind of website. Um, they have one piece of ammunition left. But apparently, I can't really bombard very much. So, you know what I will do? I will supply them. I want to keep those guys supplied. They run out of ammo really fast. Okay, down here to the VOD. Let me check the streams here. Anyone want to command the VOD? Power drop. Hey, guys, how you doing? Yeah, we are attacking Fort Bragg with, uh, uh, with Red Dawn era Soviets. 1977. Soviets invading Fort Bragg. And so far, Fort Bragg's not doing so hot. Uh, <laughs> It's 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 a mixed result. We wiped out the VDV paratroopers, like all four battalions of them. They've just been decimated. They're 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 gone. Um, the Soviet T-64 tank regiments, though, two of them, two full regiments, three battalions each, with BTR support, with Grads, with um, self-propelled 122s. I just took out the last. Of, oh no, I didn't take out the last of the Heinz. Tell you what, now that Gans is on the stream, and he loves helicopters so much. You know what, Gans? You spend so much time fixing helicopters. It's time for you to uh, tear down some helicopters. Gaz's uh, uh, M113. I don't know, was it M163? Uh, you know what? The, the the description of the unit is underneath the uh, is underneath um, this the unit type. So the unit name we can be a little bit more creative. We don't have to put in M163 Vulcan air defense system, hence VODs, because it's already in the air. Uh, it's already in the unit description. All right, uh, gas is air defense. All right, gas. I need you to take out the rest of these. Uh, the rest of these Heinz. I'm not even playing. I'm tired of these Heinz. Do it. There's one left, guys. You missed. What are you up to over there? Do these armored infantry have any anti-aircraft capability? Maybe these guys have a stinger or something to take out that last uh, MI-24 hind. Hey! That took care of that. Okay. So, I will move this guy forward. I probably shouldn't do that, but... Uh, what the hell? leaving my, my rear really unsecured here. All right, these tanks, these are going to be the new Ariskines. Ariskine replacement. Because <laughs> Ariskine, the tank unit, just got uh, nukefied a little bit. So the survivors of Task Force Ariskine go back to the rear and they get rebuilt. 66-2. Um, and we're going to see if maybe I do a little bit better this time. Uh, but first thing I'm going to do is elite replacements. Anybody else want to command tanks? Toughy ears. You're pretty badly beat up, so you know what? There's no enemy units adjacent to you. Um, there's some T-64s nearby, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, use replacements on you to build your unit back up. You can't afford to lose a tank uh, in this game. So I've got three tanks here. I'm going to try to attack. Can all of them reach? That guy. Technically, yes. Okay, I'm gonna send. I'm gonna swing this armored assault all the way around. I'm gonna try and hit this guy as hard as I possibly can. Um, this one battalion of T uh, T70 T64 is over here. So wish me luck. I'm probably gonna catch some grad support because that grad is too close. As long as you do proper jobs so you don't have to repair them. Well, they're, they're down now. They're, they're, there's no repairing those hinds. Those hinds are toast. Besides, you don't have to repair hinds. Oh my god, five and three. I don't know who this commands these tanks, but bite the pillow, dude. Please. All right, that wasn't too bad. It cost me plenty. I might wind up losing this, this tank battalion eventually for now. I've got to wipe out the rest of these tanks. Damn it! Now I can't reach them. Oh, I can't reach them. Oh, thank God. All right, who wants to command the 1st Battalion of M48s? 
Going once, going twice in the chat. Tuffy Ears, how you doing, sir? Tuffy Ears, your tanks are doing well. I just took a turn to uh, repair them. Oh, no worries, guys. Uh, I, to be honest, I wasn't going to stream at all today because we reported, we recorded like a podcast earlier today. But I was like, you know what, guys? Um, I'll pull a double because Sunday's my day. And um, the audience doesn't know that we recorded a podcast today. And I felt bad about, you know. But anyway, no worries. Um, no, this was kind of a last minute stream. What's going on over here in the chat? Vengeance will be ours. Yes, he's talking about... Okay, so I, Chip is still suggesting I send that infantry to the north. That's not a bad idea. Let me finish this up. This tank battle first. If this tank battle goes well, I'll do that. I'll, I'll say that my center is more or less stabilized at the moment, and um, it'll be okay. So M4885, let's name them. Uh, anybody want to... Anybody want to... Cool, yeah. All right, so um, let's see who else is in our chat here. Uh, because science teacher... Jen, you want tanks? No, you know what? Walkabout games. Chris, we have a uh, task force. Chris, 66. Or task force. Can I fit that? Walk. A boot. Games, 66. There we go. Walkabout games, 66. You have a brand new battalion of M48A5s. I know I just said brand new and M48 and A5 in the same sentence. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> but we're going to see if we can hunt down and finish off this last two uh, companies, or these last two platoons of uh, um, T-64s, because if they get away into those woods, they're going to rebuild. And if they rebuild, Brigadier General Risk will not be pleased. So do it! Oh my god, he got away again! Uh, these T-64s are tough. Damn it, he's probably going to rebuild now. Son of a bitch. Alright, um... Oh my god, Giannis Cobras can finish him off. I thought she already attacked. Can I undo that move, please? Undo that move. If I haven't attacked with my helicopters yet... Giannis helicopters never attacked. Alright, this is going to be kind of overkill, but again, the way this game works is if a unit gets away with even 10%, every, again, everything starts off with 10. If a unit gets away with even one uh, tank, or whatever, one, one point of strength in its, in its force, the enemy during his turn, especially if no enemy units or none of your units are adjacent to it, um, he can use the replacement rule and he can like rebuild it almost to full strength. And now you have to fight him all over again. I've got to cut down on these tanks. I'm pretty sure there's only four left. There's one I can't see right now. There's three that we can see. There's one more I can't see. He's probably being rebuilt right now. But his brother here will not be so fortunate because I'm sick of G on his ass. G, for God's sake, kill that fool. Boom! All right. Chalk up another kill here. So if you actually look on G's record, Janice Cobras, you can actually see where it will start to track the kills. She's already killed two tank battalions. And again, it won't be a big deal here in a scenario game, but in a campaign that's 10, 15, or 20 games long, these guys will build up a wicked kill score. And with their skill, as their kills go up, their experience will continue to go up. So she started off the game with 100 XP. That's this little borrow I gave her. But as you can see in this game, she's already picked up nine more experience. So again, with every 100 points, you get another stripe of experience, and I, I can tell you from experience, no pun intended, high experience units are wicked powerful in this game. So she's already 9% on her way to her second bar of experience, and this is like halfway through the first game. Again, usually a, a scenario is just one game, obviously, and a campaign is I know, a whole bunch of games. Okay, so what else is going on? All right, um... You know what, Chip? Because this is your idea. You're in charge. You are in charge. Chip Renner's Infantry Task Force. Or I should say, uh, Task Force. Alright, Chip, I hope I understand what you were asking me to do. If I didn't, you can blame, um, you can blame the commander. 
Oh my god, the chat's going crazy. Uh, fatality. Yes. Um, mention the gaming weekend. Oh my god. I want Special Forces to take out the Kami HQ. I think the Kami HQ did get away. I'll have to send somebody out after him. Um, so give me one second to... Okay, it won't let me into that village, but I can threaten it. That will probably cause some... Now, that's probably the last we're going to hear of Task Force Shipbrenner 66. We just sent him out into the void. <laughs> <laughs> he's now one, two, three, four. He's at least four hexes behind the enemy lines, but he is now threatening these two uh, objectives slash the supply hexes. So the objective hex has got the gold frame, and the supply hex has a green frame. This hex is both, hence it's kind of split. So by threatening these two hexes on what I hope is a somewhat open road, um, the Soviets are going to do their best to close that road, and she, he's going to get clobbered. He's going to get attacked by several things. Whatever the Soviets have running around back here in their backfield. I'll send them some helicopter support. But again, those helicopters are running out of missiles. Uh, in fact, my Kiwas are now totally out of missiles. I know they are. He has zero out of two. And those um, Cobras are... Ah, she's okay. She has five left out of eight. So you have to watch your ammunition in this game. Okay, so before we get too much further uh, here in our game... Um, Jan is asking me to, man to mention our upcoming gaming weekend. So for people who may not know, um, we are defying um, expectations here. And we are choosing to be hella optimistic. And we're going to say, you know what? Come hell or high water, this whole virus thing is going to be calmed down in the next, you know, eight months or so. And we are setting up a gaming weekend for ourselves and for our community in Chicago, February, I think it's 19th and 20th, um, Janet, correct me if I'm wrong, um, it's it's uh, that time in February, and we're all going to get together and we're going to play some awesome games. We're going to have a total of eight 4x4 four four tables set up, we've already got a bunch of people that are interested, um, as far as what the tables are going to be, that's largely up to the community, we have a beginning menu for the moment, but again, that's, that's definitely up for grabs. Um, so far... We are keeping it a little loose, so we have an open table where anybody can play anything. We're going to have an old classics uh, table for Panzer Leader, Panzer Blitz, Valor and Victory, old Hex Encounter stuff. Um, we're going to have a table for um, Ultra Moderns. People have been asking about it. We're going to have a table, I think we decided, for 6mm Team Yankee uh, using old GHQ models, or 6mm... Um, uh, if not Team Yankee, uh, sorry, uh, North Hag. Uh, we're going to try that out. I think we decided on North Hag. Um, we're going to have a black powder table. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what we're talking about there. Um, I suggested American Revolution because I have the armies already built. I have 400 20 millimeter American Revolution miniatures and tons of terrain built, set up, throw it in a box, it's ready to go. However, other people are looking at piracy. Uh, pirates are currently winning our, um, our our poll that we're having over there on Facebook, and uh, of course, American Re uh, Civil War is always very popular. So somewhere in there, we're going to have some black powder. We may have a black powder table and a pirate table. I'm not 100% sure on that yet. Uh, okay, uh, February 19th to 21st, uh, hotel, food, and drink are all included. Awesome, Sit Rep Podcast. You just heard it from uh, Sit Rep 66. So that's our uh, that's our that's our CEO there. Um, giving us the actual uh, specifics on the upcoming gaming weekend. I think we're tentatively calling it the St. Valentine's Day Massacre because it's sort of close to St. Valentine's Day. Um, but yeah, February 19th to 20th, uh, 21st total. Oh no, February 19th to 21st includes, I'm sorry, hotel food and uh, drink included. Cool. They can reach the village. Okay, I'm looking over at the other chat here. The other infantry group to the north as well. Uh, oh, there's one over here in nine. That's not a bad idea. Okay, Chip. Chip is literally taking command of my infantry. I like it. I'm going to name this one Task Force Chip Runner. Uh, 55. To go with 66. These guys can totally reach the village. Yeah, you're right. Do it! I'm surprised I didn't run into anybody. 
because again, the game has a fog of war mechanic, and when you start moving deep into what you think is em empty enemy terrain, you run into stuff. And when you run into stuff that you're wasn't previously displayed on your fog of war, the computer gives the enemy AI a free ambush attack. You literally just blundered into them. You didn't know they were there until they opened fire on you. That's bad, especially for infantry in APCs. If the, if the enemy has any kind of rockets, like if I ran into the tanks and I was still mounted in the M113s, oh no. I mean, picture a field full of 20 or 30 M113s loaded full of American boys, and they just ran into T-64s in a tree line, and the T-64s got the first shot. That's... Your battalion commander is sending home a lot of letters. That's that's not a good day. That is a Purple Heart kind of day. Um, so obviously we are trying to avoid that because that's not good. But, um, so yeah, Chimp's being very bold, but so far we've gotten away with it. And again, I'm hoping that it will uh, actually cause the Soviets, whatever Soviet units I don't see, to turn around a little bit. Because, again, the game doesn't really care. It's not that complicated of a game. The game doesn't care about roads and villages and crossroads. You know what it does care about? Objective access. And the game is going to see me threatening these two objective X's. I'm predicting we're going to see some about faces here in the Soviet force that may have actually bought me a little bit of time. So I'm going to end the turn and see what happens. Uh, ben Johnson says, COVID needs to go away before September football season. This is of paramount importance. <laughs> Are they still going to have the games? They're just not going to open the stadiums? Like it's all going to be televised as opposed to live views? Um, I wonder if that would work. I mean, I know they could do that, but I don't know how much money that would cost them versus how much money. Those television contracts are a big deal. I know some people are talking about having games in empty stadiums that they can still televise and, you know, uh, make that revenue, even if they're not getting the revenue from the actual live stadium. I don't know enough about that industry to know, like, what that balance is, but I would bet that they would, uh, still have the games even if they couldn't open the stadiums they would have it in an empty stadium turn the cameras on and sell beer commercials all right so it's going to be ussr turn five it's now um let's see day of may 9th 1977. so we're still doing it the soviets are running away behind me oh my god goodness Uh, not sure, TV for sure, but maybe no fans. It would be weird. Yeah, I, I, I think some people are thinking about doing that. Uh, I'm not sure about football, but I've seen, like, aren't some other sports already doing that? Um, I honestly don't know. I don't really watch a lot of sports. Uh, okay, cool. Tough Ears says, cool, I'm in the UK, so yeah, you won't make it. Um, Sit Rep Pod, I, I'm sorry, Tough Ears, I'm pretty sure Sit Rep Podcast told us that we are going to be streaming or broadcasting, we're going to do what we can for a, for a virtual audience. Um, again, I have been to a couple of OTT boot camps, so I know how complicated and how much work really goes into one of those. I'm not sure if we can pull it off in the same kind of style that they do, but we are damn sure going to do our best. I mean, we're going to take their damn good care of our live audience there, but as far as like a live blog and streaming all the time and stuff like that, that that's going to be tough. Um, I'm sure we can figure it out, and we got plenty of time, so we will definitely do our best. And meanwhile, Sit Rep Podcast says, what? You can be the barmaid? Oh, because science teacher? Because That's my girlfriend, because science teacher says, yeah, uh, I'll do anything you need to help. Coffee girl, and Jen says she can be the barmaid. Okay. <laughs> Empty stadium matches, footballs in the key. Yeah, I saw something about that, Tough Ears. Um, that's soccer to you, Yanks. Yeah. I think Ben's talking about uh, real football. As a... <laughs> I'm now having like an argument across two different streams. Um, but anyway, Soviet tanks are heading for the southern village. Yeah, I saw that. They um, they ran away to avoid my little uh, task force of tanks here, and they, they bolted down this way, which is not good because there are objective hexes down here. So I'm going to have to get uh, a little creative. Okay, so slow down and think, Mr. Jones. My Kiowas are totally out of ammo, but they can still spot. So I'm going to send them down where I saw those tanks go. Hopefully she can spot those tanks. She 
she landed right on top of those tanks. <laughs> she can't attack them. Oh, sorry, I had a little pop there. Uh, she can't attack them because uh, she doesn't have any ammo. But at least she did see them. Now, helicopters. Do my helicopters go north to support ship's infantry heading up this road? There's at least one air defense unit back there. There's a shield can watch out for him. Or do they go south to sort of clean up my back area a little bit? Do I defend my two objective hexes, or do I attack two Soviet objective hexes? Bearing in mind that if I send Gianna's helicopters up there, she'll be dealing with this Shilka. And by the way, there are two Shilkas. I don't know where the other one even is. Push infantry up the road and stop in the woods on the right. Got it. Um, so stop on the woods on the right. Got it. So if we're doing that, I will go ahead and uh, not send the helicopters up there. It calls those clear hexes, even though there's a little bit of woods graphics on them. That's a forest hex. Oh boy. Let's get, let's get ballsy. Let's see what happens. I hope I don't run into anything. No whammies, no whammies. Ah, got away with it. All right, they are now dismounted in woods, and they're practically overlooking these two Soviet objective axes. They're all by their lonesome up there, but those are my def those are my those are my green berets up there. And <laughs> they are deep in the enemy backfield, all by themselves. All right, maybe I will. I had, they still haven't spotted anything, so I can't send my helicopter up there. Tell you what, though, I'm gonna send Gianna's badass Cobras. Nuke them. Those tanks have got away. Rebuilt so we, uh, rebuilt Ariskany Task Force is going to go this way and try to attack them. Damn it, I just can't kill those guys. Who is this? Walkabout Game 66. All right, walkabout games. This is your chance to redeem yourself. You let them get away last time. Walkabout games. We're gonna have a discussion about how to kill T64s. <laughs> we're gonna have a we're gonna have a, an awkward conversation. All right. All right. I'm gonna clean out some of these grass. Do it. This uh, Tuffy Ear 66 and this uh, Soviet Tank Battalion have been kind of staring at each other for a while. Neither of them have, have attacked each other. Notice that AI has kept that unit perfectly still for at least two turns now. He's as scared of me as I am of him. But I have infantry and artillery support. Amphibious Monster, 8 inches. Shell that fool. Hopefully that reduces entrenchment level. Infantry vehicles, or uh, infantry. You know what, uh, before we do that. Uh, I know this isn't how they actually number task forces, but just for now. I'm naming them more like individual tracks within a company. So we're going to see if they can, again, they're going to get clobbered, but I'm going to hopefully reduce entrenchment level, maybe knock one or two teeth off of it, so that I set him up, this T-64 battalion, for a main attack from Tuffy Year 66. Oh, man. Oh, that's ugly. Sorry. Sorry. Oof. All right, they need support, Tuffy, seriously. Get in there. Get it done. Do it. Nice. All right. That was a nice crack. He's still there. He's going to get reinforcements, but... By the way, can I buy anything? Have I earned enough exp experience to buy anything? Uh, I doubt it, but let me see. Requisition. Unit. 
points. I only have 79 points. Yeah, I'm spending all my points on rebuilding existing units, which is always the better option. So I've got a little operating budget for my units to get rebuilt and so on. Have I fired all my units now? Oh no, my VOD hasn't done anything yet. Oh, apparently he has. I don't know what the hell that one is. Oh, the artillery vehicle. That's Ben's artillery vehicle. Um, let's get him up in the woods. There you go. Entrench your, your, entrench your artillery in the woods, Ben. And that's all the units. Let's see what the enemy does. There goes that tank. He just grabbed my objective X. Ben just used up more artillery on those fleeing Soviet tanks. More tanks are behind me. Oh my god, I got outflanked. I got outflanked on the right. Oh no! Alright, let me catch up with the chat here. Um, push infantry up the road and to the right. That is good up there. Can that other infantry on the lower wood still have movement towards the support? Yeah, I'm going to consolidate that. I'm going to attack those two objective axes. Because the enemy's deep in my back country, i got to return the favor. Maybe that'll get the enemy to turn around. But so far, they're not turning around so much. Alright, let me see what's going on over on Twitch. We have a good conversation this time, guys. Uh, yeah, empty stadium matches uh, in the UK at soccer TV games. Cool. All right, I'm all caught up on chat. Meanwhile, Kiowas are going to go find those Soviet tanks. Found them. Who can reach them? That's not terribly uh, huge. Task force at risk 66. I should, I'm going in the wrong direction, but what the hell. I forgot to say kill this dude. Vengeance. This guy, rebuild. Walkabout game 66. Rebuild, please. Here we go. Alright, so walkabout game 66 has been rebuilt to 10. Um, I got I got problems, man. Oh, no. No, no. Get into the woods, please. They just abandoned Ben. <laughs> Alright, cool. Alright, Janet, you just saw it. That was Chip Brenner, 31. We're going to call him Special Forces. He just wiped out the Soviet command post. Um, or a command vehicle. Let me guess. Are you almost out of, our t out of ammunition? You are out of ammunition. Alright, I have to get to rebuild you before you die. Uh, amphibious monster, May wind up getting killed soon, um, but at least I'm gonna. At least you're gonna have ammunition to fight with. Make your last stand. Cool. All right. So apparently, elite replacements gives you full ammunition too. I will remember that. All right. Here is uh, battle group chip up here. I mean, there's got to be something on that objective, Max, and I don't want to walk you into an ambush. So, mm. oh damn, that's not good. Damn, I, I, we just walked into an ambush. I friggin' knew it. That's okay. What an enemy uh, objective and supply hex is now under attack. So I'm hoping that will give the enemy some pause. Rebuild. Rebuild. I'm running out of money. You see that one only went to nine? Oh, that's not good. That's not good. Okay, I never used Janus Cobras. Thank God. Alright, uh, get up here and, and save Ben. Kill those tanks, please. Worth every penny. I spent a ton of points on that uh, super upgraded uh, Cobra. 
anti-tank ability, helicopter ability. These are all special abilities that increase their stats. Um, uh, which one call it? Uh, stripe of experience. Um, Kick-ass anti-tank attack value 21. That's absurd. Um, it's really high, so it's yeah. I spend a lot of money on it, and so far she's only taken a little bit of damage. She's down nine from ten, and she's wiped out two and a half battalions of Soviet tanks. So so far things are going tense, but I think I got it. We'll see what happens. What else is up here? Him, I'm leaving alone because I don't want Soviets to come and steal any of my objective axes. I don't think I have any air missions. Because I kind of, I didn't want to get too many jets in the game, so I'll, I'll, I'll try that again in a later session. But you notice there's been no jet fighters, no fixed wing aircraft in this game. I set both sides at zero for air support. Um, because they tend to really swing the game wildly one way or the other. Like, you can have a battle that's going tense. Oh my god, what's going to happen? It's, you know, it's fun, it's entertaining, and then an A-10 flies over and kaboom. Or an SU-25 or a MiG-23. Gotta risk it for a biscuit. Yeah, we got uh, we got clobbered a little bit up there, but um, there's another battalion right behind him that's gonna hopefully save it. I might lose Chip Brenner 55. Chip Brenner 55 is gonna get hit next turn by the Soviets. I have no artillery support. I have no other. Um, Chip Brenner 66 might be able to uh, redress the situation later, though. We'll see what happens. Let's hope we get lucky. It's. Um, Daylight and it's good weather. That's not good. I was hoping for rain. Ooh, he didn't attack me. That was your mistake, Mister. That was your mistake. All right, now I know where he is. So. Losing on the uh, on the random mem number generator. Oh my god! Fall back. He can't fall back now. He's doomed. Oh man! Damn it! Uh, that was not good. Artillery this fool. Gianna. No! Damn it. Um, air mode. Gianna, throw rockets in there. Boom. And now Gianna's going to move north as far as she can to uh, hopefully adjust the situation that we have up north. Up north, I kind of stuck my paw in the bear trap a little bit. But um, hopefully, walk about game 66. Okay, walk about game 66. This is literally your third try. This is the third time walk about game 66 has been right next to an enemy tank that should be killed because I'm tired of them reinforcing themselves. This is the third time he's let him get away. Or he? No, this is not the third time. He's let him get away twice. This is his third chance. Three strikes and you're out. Kill these two tanks, please. Do it. Alright, Walkabout Games, you have redeemed yourself. You took one little bit of damage, but you wiped out those last T-64s. Oh my god, I don't even know how many T-64s he has left. Tank support for Ch uh, Task Force Chip. Although I think he's going to lose at least one of his battalions. I can't save him. Because he's going to get attacked by two units next turn. I don't think he's surviving. Um, unless, hold on, uh, shift R, maybe I will use some units, air units. I have six points, I can do defensive fire support mission. Fly the planned air missions, yes. Oh, okay, I put it here. 
Uh, let's see what they give us. Go up against this guy. Do it. F-15s. Oh, now he'll sit there, and when this guy decides to attack me, those F-15s will bomb them. That's a defensive air support mission. So I'm trying to give uh, Chip's commandos up here some kind of air support. Tanks and helicopters are on the way, um, and uh, there's F-15s flying combat air patrol overhead. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to save them, but I really kind of screwed up up there. It is not pretty up there at all. Alright, I'm going to send these Kiwas as far north as I can. They can't get very far north right now. Oh, there's another tank. They did spot another tank unit up there. All right, we got two unnamed battalions of tanks. Last call for anyone who wants to command some tanks. Let's see who else is in our, in our, in our chat here. Uh, lower the barrels, direct fire! <laughs> ben, you got support. You got uh, Apaches. I keep calling them Apaches. You got Cobras, and then you got, uh, uh, um, what was that, Walkabout Game 66? Came in there and cleaned it out. So, yeah, your, uh, your M110s are still... Uh, I just realized I misspelled Amphibious Monster. And FIP monster. I'll fix that in a minute. Can I fix it now? Yes. It's Amphib monster, fool. Sorry about that. I misspelled your name. Cool. Oh, boy. You know what I'm going to do? Uh, I'm going to do this. This guy... Go away. He is going to go and re retake that uh, empty effect of this. Because there's no more um, Soviet helicopters on the table, so I'm pretty sure I'm safe. So that VOD is going to gas his air defense. It's going to run around our back area and sort of uh, retake some of these objective hexes that the Soviets claimed earlier in the game. All right, what's going on? We already have a tough of years. We have walkabout games. We have Ben Johnson. Who else is in our stream here? Oh, no. Uh, sit in a podcast because science teacher. All right, you know what? Uh, this is going to be renamed unit. Task Force Ralph 66 from our SITREP team. Task Force Marty 66 from our uh, SITREP team. And I'm going to send them into action. They have got to take out these T-64s. I'm going to send in... Ralph is an M48, so I'm going to send him in first. He's going to take the lumps, and hopefully that'll soften him up for Marty to do some damage with the M60s. It's kind of a brutal tactic. Yeah, four to three. Get lucky, get lucky, get lucky, get lucky, get lucky. Uh, four to three. I gave us a... No, actually, it was a little bit less. But now his entrenchment level is lower, and hopefully Marty will have more success. Marty's got better uh, better guns. Yeah, two to four. Do it. Run away in the woods. All right, Ben, you've got uh, Soviet tank survivors running around behind you. Ben's, like, in the middle of the battlefield, and there are Soviet and American tanks just, like, swirling around him in all directions. Like, what the hell's going on around here? All right, I think that's it for my turn. All right, we got air support over here. This this is the one part of the battlefield I'm not happy with the extreme north. We got too aggressive against those objective hexes. Let's see what happens. Because I've, I've moved all my units now, right? Ben's units have moved, not moved. They can't attack, can they? No, because they already attacked. Uh, but it's asking me if I want to move them. I do not want to move them. Next. That's it. Okay, so I'm ending, ending the turn. Oh, rainy night. Uh, I don't know how that's going to affect things. It's night and it's rainy coming up. So that is going to be good news, bad news for up north. Number one, it's going to make any Soviet attack against me weaker because it's tough to attack at night in the rain. Um, so that's good news for um, ship survivors up there. However... It might also affect my defensive air support. F-15s are all-weather fighters. I don't know if this game knows that. 
Um, and again, it's also 1977. Um, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. And the defensive artillery support. He's going for my objective, Hexus. Defend Fort Bragg. It's now our turn. Somehow we survived. They did not attack you. Those, those F-15, those F-15 scared them. All right, Chip. Here's what's gonna happen. You are falling back. This guy is getting rebuilt. This guy moving back was his turn, so I can't rebuild him yet. Um, I'm gonna rebuild this guy. This is Tuffy Year 66. I think this is the second time you've been rebuilt. And uh, Janus Cobras. It is night rain, so I don't know how effective my Cobras are gonna be here. And I only have two ammo, two pieces of ammo left. I can eventually uh, put them back on my airfield, but I have to go all the way back there to do that. It's gonna take a couple turns. You know what? I'm probably gonna go ahead and start that now. Right? Because I have to be. Yeah, I have to be uh, over an airfield to give them resupply. A friendly airfield that's also a supply point. So I'm withdrawing the helicopters. I'm withdrawing those troops. We're kind of in a staring contest now for the rest of this rainy night. And we're going to see if we can uh, do something in the morning. Meanwhile, there is a Soviet tank company somewhere. Where's my Kiwis? Can he cannot reach him. Walkabout Games can reach him. Alright, Walkabout Games, see if you can take these fools out. This is your second chance to redeem yourself. You're already redeemed, but this would be great if you can. Really? Huh. Why was that 3 to 1 against me? But you did well. Alright, let's see if um, Chip Brenner 31 can finish him off. Chip Brenner Special Forces versus retreating Soviet tanks. Kill them! Do it! Oh no, they missed. Alright, no worries. Task Force Oriskany 66 will handle it. Eight against one, that wasn't much of a battle. I will not try to be uh, all hardcore John Wayne about it. Alright, Gaz is about cleaned up our little mess in our rear areas there. Alright, we have Task Force Marty. Marty's going into those woods to see if there's anyone left in there. I don't think there is. Alright, cool. Um, Ralph 66. I know there's some grods up here. Go find some grods. Can't find anything yet. The Soviet army might largely be kind of smashed. We'll see what happens. All right, Ben uh, is going to relo relocate his artillery into Gans's town here. Uh, I'm sorry, into Chip's town. And uh, that way, if we do, you know, can I undo that? That's about as far as I can. What's his range? Seven. Good grief. Uh, I'm trying to see if I can get artillery support. One, two, turn. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, they can't. Ben can't quite reach these two Soviet uh, infantry battalions up here. But if they get cute and try to come out of their fortified positions, which I doubt they will, and attack any more of Chip's guys, they are going to get hell up to bombarded by Ben's 8-inch uh, artillery and defensive fire support. So I don't think now. I, now I definitely don't think they're going to do. It. I think I think we saved Chip's guys. Chip's guys didn't take these objective axes, but at least I think. Um, I think, at least I think they, they, they're, they're, they're going to live. They're going to survive. And I think all my guys have now moved. Let me go back to the main menu here. Yeah, I've now moved all my units. Let's go back to AI. The game's almost over anyway. We're on turn 9 of 10. That was it. The Soviets have already taken their turn. They don't have very much left. How big is the hex in this scale? Um... Uh, 
Yeah, hell yeah, Ben, your guys got saved. Um, how big is the hex in this game? I have no idea. Honestly, this is people... Okay, the game in question here is called People's General. This was... Everyone knows Panzer General. Da, 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 da. Everyone knows Panzer General, right? Literally, if you if you don't know Panzer General, you're not a war gamer. Just kidding, but not really. Um, <laughs> Panzer General was a classic way back in the day. We've done Panzer General here on the Sit Rep Podcast before. Um, after that came Allied General, which was a lot of fun. And then they came out with what they called People's General. People's General was a modern look. Right, when I say modern, I mean, well, it was a modern video game at the time, but like a modern warfare, like 1980s, 1990s kind of thing, where you commanded the Red Chinese against, um, in a various, uh, in a whole different bunch of situations. Uh, you could fight, I think, the Russians in Mongolia. I know that for sure. You could fight Americans and nationalist Chinese in Taiwan. You could hell a fight. They postulated different uh, uh, scenarios and campaigns where there would be some sort of a new uh, war in Korea, North Korea versus North Korea and China versus uh, U.S., Japan, and uh, uh, South Korea, obviously. And I think they maybe even had some uh, some historical uh, 1978 to 1979 Vietnam versus China. There were, like, for those who don't know, check out part four of our Vietnam series of Op Center. There was a huge war between the Vietnamese and the Chinese, red on red violence. Um, yeah, not all communist countries got along. Look at Vietnam. They went to war and crushed communist Cambodia. And then when you know, their allies, the Chinese, got pissed off and invaded North Korea, the Vietnamese turned north and stomped the hell out of the Chinese up there, too. So if you look at Vietnam, this is a little bit of a tangent here, but if you look at Vietnam, 1945 to 1980, they beat the French, they beat the Americans, they beat the Cambodians, and then they beat the Chinese. Um, and of course, the Chinese have a huge army. So, Vietnam is, you know, the Afghanistan of Southeast Asia. Those, don't, don't mess with those guys, man. Um, <laughs> but anyway, those are the kind of battles that People's General kind of looked at. And this was basic People's General. We're looking at it right here. Now, what the modding community did, once the game sort of became abandonware or whatever, um, later on in the odds in the early 2010s, uh, I think this one came out in uh, 2012, this particular mod, uh, this guy, I think his name was Robert Mary, um, he just started modding the ever-living hell out of it, and there is now, again, three different versions of Cold War, 55, 1980, 2000, um, there's Arab Israeli Wars, there's... American Revolution, Napoleonics, American Civil War. Uh, this guy went all over the place uh, as far as uh, mods for people's general go. So it's that basic, there's a lineage, it goes back to that basic Panzer General system where the map, you start off in, you know, the Czech Republic and you have to get to Warsaw. Or you start off near Luxembourg and you have to get almost all the way to Paris. You know, it's that large operational scale gaming. That's not really how we're playing it here, but I have no idea how big these hexes are supposed to be. If it's an operational game, several miles across. Um, I don't know if this airfield, one, two, it's a two hex airfield. How big is an airfield? An airfield is usually, what, about three miles to four miles long? So we can maybe guess like two miles across, um, but that is hell of a guess. Um, I have no idea how accurate this map is. Um, but then again, when we played People's General Waterloo a couple weeks ago, June 18th, for the 205th anniversary of that battle, for those who are familiar with the Battle of Waterloo, the entire battlefield is really only two miles across. So a hex th in that game is a couple hundred meters, tops, maybe a hundred meters. So again, as far as how big the hex is, it's a good question. I just wish I had a better answer, but I honestly don't. Um, my only, my only real answer is, it's people's general, you know, it's, it's fine, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, okay, so, what else is going on here? Alright, we're going to start the turn with Mr. Air Defense. Take that objective hex, thank you very much. Okay, we lost sight of some of those, uh, forces up there. Get north, you are our space. I know you have no ammo, but get up there anyway. 
again as Cobras get back to the airfield. And what we're going to do is we're going to reload, reload, rearm you um, on your next turn. Alrighty. Walk about games, a risk any. How about a risk any gets back in the battle? What do we say? A risk any is now right behind the amphibious monster. The amphibious monster is going to go forward a few hexes so that I can properly support any attack that uh, we eventually mount against this hex on the very last turn of the game. Yep, I see some enemies. This unit that uh, got a uh, chip, chip Renner 66 that got clobbered last turn and had to pull back, I'm gonna rebuild him. This unit. Let's go for it. Uh, zero to five. All right, Chip, what do you think of those odds? The computer is predicting zero losses for you and five losses for the Soviets. The only thing that might muck that up is if the Soviets have artillery support nearby that I don't know about. There is at least one Grod battery not accounted for. Let's see what happens. No artillery support. You got them down to one, and you've lost one. All right, awesome. Cool. Things are going a little bit better for us there in the north. What are those guys? 1955 KGB border troops. I did not build those. So what the computer did was use some of its prestige points, that's currency in the game, to uh, levy new units, throwaway units. So he got some super cheap infantry. So I don't know how KGB border troops made it over here to Port Fort Bragg. Um, <laughs> uh, they're a little confused about uh, you know where they are. But uh, yeah, Fort Bragg is nowhere near any Soviet border. So I can go ahead and give the, uh, you know, a risk any seal of approval on that one. I'm just looking at the map here and see what else we should do. Yep. Uh, Ralph is kind of unsupported out there by himself, so I'm going to send Marty out there to back him up. I still can't find that Soviet artillery, and I know it's back here somewhere. Let me not get too spread out. Still don't see anything. Let me make sure I'm not leaving any units unattended. Walk about game 66. You've secured our rear areas. Get back to the front. And ship runner 31. Same deal. Alright, we've definitely defeated the Soviet attack on Fort Bragg, and now we're pushing forward to uh, clean out their little bridgehead. It would be nice to take at least one of these objective hexes before the game ends. When the game ends, it's probably going to call it a draw, because there's no way I'm taking all of these objective hexes. But um, we'll see what happens. I've now used all my units. Last turn of the game, it's another rainy night. Let's see what happens. May 11th, 1977. Retreating enemy soldiers. Scout ahead. Alright, so now that the Kiowa has them spotted, I'm pretty sure Ben will be able to shell them. Yep. Did you guys see that? That's combined arms warfare. That's how you do recon helicopters and artillery and tanks and everything else. So Ben's 8 inchers, now that he's getting uh, grid coordinates from G uh, Giannis Kiwas up here, Ben's 8 inchers is going to shell these fools. Knocked him down to 60%. I'm going to send in Tuffy Ear 66. Hopefully nuke him off that hex. Ship Brenner 66. Clean him out. Hopefully. Boom. Now, Chip Renner 55 runs forward and grabs that objective. I will not attack that hex because these fools are dug in. They are entrenchment level 4. If you see down there at the bottom uh, left, I'm sorry, the bottom right hand side of your screen, entrenchment 4, those are guards armored infantry with BTR 70 uh, infantry carrier support. They have been sitting on that hex since the beginning of the game. 
they have wielded nothing but shovels. And they are dug in like an Alabama tick, to quote the immortal uh, Jesse the Body. Um, so there's no way in God's hell I'm going to go ahead and attack them. Uh, well, number one, the game's going to be over. But I'm not sending in that, that second attack. If this game was going to go on another turn, um, I would advance Ben's artillery one hex and make sure that Ben's artillery could shell them next turn. Make sure Ben's artillery has some ammunition. He's got one ammunition point left. So he would use that next turn to bombard that hex, and we would see, you know, we'll go ahead and take it from there. Harris and he's going to continue along this swing on our left. I'm still looking for that damn artillery. I don't know where the hell he went. Look at that. They might be back on these objective axes. Um, nothing going on down here. Let's, okay, Va, uh, Gaz, I'm going to send you on a little recon mission. I know recon's not really your thing with the VOD, but check out these bridges. Make sure the Soviets aren't doing anything stupid. No, nothing going on over there. I might have tabled them. But I know there are some units not accounted for. Now, I should be able to repair these guys. All to our... Yep. Cool. So it's kind of too late because the game's basically over, but Gianna's helicopters are now back to 8 out of 8. And they are back to uh, 10 out of 10 uh, strength points and 8 out of 8 uh, ammo points. I remember Gaz and I were trying to figure this out on a previous stream, how to rearm and reinforce helicopters. You have to have an airfield. You have to own the airfield. It has to be a supply point. That's that green part of the frame there. So um, it takes, unfortunately, a turn or two. But some helicopters are so freaking powerful that in the meantime, um, you know, they're really doing awesome here. Walk about games, join the party, oh again, the game's pretty much over. And that concludes the turn. Let's see what this is. Oh, Western loss. Four victory hexes captured. Okay, it says I lost the game. Uh, okay, if you say so. There's one company of KGB troops, of really one platoon of KGB troops. There's all their artillery. They got this little bit of force here. Oh man. Marty 66, do you see where your tank is? You are right about to run into a whole bunch of Soviet stuff. <laughs> there are grads over here. Oh man, there was a whole battle force over here. What the hell are you doing? Uh, AI? So here is um, Gans' air defense. There was a whole Soviet battle group, I guess, just parked down here. I don't know what the AI is doing sometimes, guys. Um, but anyway, the best I can do is I can usually just give the AI a lot of more, a lot more points in a given game, and that's how we uh, come up with a balanced game, even though the AI is kind of retarded. So that was uh, that was the game. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Um, we can bring in some A10s on the next one if we want. So if we go super fast, like like how you would do that, you go to uh, eh, just grab a random game or whatever. Um, say okay, I don't know what year this is. I think that's 2010. Um, let's make this force Americans. Force one was the Americans. All right, cool. So, deploy forces. Make 21 TFU air support. Holy shit. Well, oh, those are all Soviet forces. Make 29 farmers. Holy crap. I did not build this game, guys. Am I four Heinz? Where are my German forces? Or have I not built any German forces yet? Adjust units. Requisition. All right, something's up with this game here, guys. Uh, I was trying to at least buy an A10 to show you where it is on the in the, in the menu, but for some reason it's not letting me uh, do anything right now. Let me try one more time. Or hell, we'll just start a new one. 
Uh, this is the map that you buy. So, not the map you buy, you just pick a map that they have. Um, who knows what's going on here? Panama Canal, they have a couple maps. Oak Ridge, oh my god, New York, you can put New York on the table. Let's have a battle in New York. <laughs> because it makes less than no sense. Um, Soviets versus Americans, please. What does this map look like? I'm just curious. Oh yeah, look at that, they did New York. There's Manhattan. Oh my god, look at those city hexes. <laughs> That's not right. Alright, but in all seriousness, um, requisition units. Alright, it's still not letting me do this. Um, there's a little bug in the game, guys, where like you have to pick the right year, and that year has to be... So I'll, I'll mess with this later. But uh, yeah, you can definitely put A-10s in the game. You guys can trust me on that. Um, I might have to go to a different mod of the game. In other words, I'm right now playing technically in Cold War 55. I might have to go to that Cold War 80 or Cold War 2000. But uh, they're in here. I've seen them. Oh no, there's Lady Liberty. Dense urban. Yeah, no kidding. You got Battery Park in here. Oh, there's the Flatiron building. Look at this. Some of these buildings look a little crooked. <laughs> Brooklyn Bridge. George Washington Bridge. Oh my god, look at this. Where's USS Intrepid? Right around this uh, coastline somewhere. The MetLife building. <laughs> This map is ridiculous. Who the hell wants to have a battle in Manhattan? Oh my god. We can redo uh, some Revolutionary War battles, the Battle of Long Island. Uh, that did not go well in the American Revolution. We can put a modern British army with challengers here versus a modern American army with M1s, and we can redo the Battle of Long Island in 2020 if we want to get completely absurd. Alright guys, but anyway, now I'm just kind of rambling, so... Uh, we hope you, you enjoyed our impromptu kind of last minute stream. Uh, we always have some kind of war game on Sunday. Sometimes it's tough finding an opponent lately. Uh, a lot of people are doing other things on uh, on Sunday, so we are kind of up against it as far as uh, coming up with good opponents. So if anyone is ever interested in trying out any of our war games live, all you need is a Skype account. In fact, you don't even really need that. You need an internet connection. Get in touch with me. You can be a star on the show. We'll build you a scenario. Um, not all of our rules are super complicated. We don't always start off with Panzer Leader, trust me. There's Valor and Victory, which is super easy. The rules are free. I'll send you a copy of the rules, and we can try out um, an actual real war game with a live opponent, as opposed to just beating up on a computer AI here. Although this is fun, it's going to get boring eventually. Um, we do have a little bit of a game, hopefully, on the books. Uh, I want to, I don't want to completely confirm this, so I'm just going to kind of sketch it out, um, because I don't want to talk for other people, or speak for other people, but we are setting up a scenario of Battlefield Revolution, that's my own American Revolutionary War game, tactical level, like, uh, 50 to 80 man companies, you know, uh, your usual, you know, 19, uh, 1770s, 1780s uh, kind of combat, uh, we've had a couple of successful play tests with, um, um, Damon, sorry, uh, Dylan, um, over in Australia, who's a big-time Napoleonics expert. So I wanted him to take an honest look at my American Revolution game and, you know, tell me if it's no good or what can be improved on. So we made some adjustments. Um, it now runs pretty smoothly. And what we're going to do is we're going to run, um, I'm not sure exactly when, definitely not next weekend, because next weekend's a holiday. But uh, maybe the weekend after that, we're going to do a British player, that's probably going to be Gaz and or Ralph, versus Gianna as an American player, uh, plus, you know, and or Marty. Um, and we're going to have an American Patriot Force played by an American player versus a Crown Force played by a British player. And we're going to, uh, you know, liberty or death, we're going to, we're going to redo the American Revolution uh, on one-to-one -one scale, so to speak. We're going to really do it. Um, what makes it fun for me is when I can get uh, when I can convince British players to play the British, and I can get American players, obviously, uh, to play the Americans. That's when it gets fun. Um, I'll make sure that the game is perfectly balanced, or as close to perfectly balanced as I can, so it will not be a historical battle. We won't be like doing like the Battle of Trenton or Monmouth or Oriskany. We're gonna make up like you know 
sometime in mid 1777 or something. You know, we're gonna do like a like a random battle. Um, that way we can balance it like evenly. We can have the objectives right in the middle of the field, and uh, we can have like a true, you know, may the best man win kind of a thing. As opposed to like a battle like Trenton, which is the Americans are coming in, they have complete surprise. The Hessians cannot activate until the Americans fire first and blow away a whole bunch of troops or whatever, and only then. But at the same time, the Americans can't lose a single unit because you know these really really wonky asymmetrical victory conditions. Um, it's going to be a straight out open field kind of a fight um, between British and Americans is what we're going to do probably in two, maybe three weeks, sometime soon. Um, is what we have on the cards. And again, uh, I would be remiss to uh, not mention, again, if you're interested in this kind of game on Sunday, I always need opponents. So someone reach out to me and let me know what's going on uh, if you want to play anything between 1775 and 2020. If it's anywhere in there, land, sea, or air, I've got a game that covers it. Trust me. And uh, these games are quick and easy and simple. They're designed for streams. All you need is an internet account an internet connection and you can play in this game we'll put your voice on the chat you'll be there in front of the community and when you kick my ass you will have lifetime bragging rights that you own a victory live on stream against the great Ariskami or not so great Ariskami um, and the last thing of course is again if you're interested in our upcoming February uh, uh, live event gaming event in Chicago let myself or Gianna know and what we will do is we will get you uh, signed up as soon as that apparatus is in place. Again, that's going to be February 19th through the 21st. Uh, we are going to be pushing that thing hard all through the rest of the year. Also, keep an eye out for 13 days to 13 hours. Um, you saw my stream last week where I'm actually working on that. Uh, the transit game is probably two-thirds done. I know Gianna and Marty are starting to do some planning for the... Uh, for the actual compound game, they're running out of time. They got about two months left um, to build that freaking thing. So uh, yeah, well, you know, keep keep an eye out for that to see you know what progress and updates we have on that. Um, but for now, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and uh, sign off the stream. Thanks very much for uh, to Ben and Chip uh, for showing up on YouTube. Also, walk about games um, over on YouTube. Be sure I'm not missing anybody. Uh, and then, of course, on Twitch, we have a ton of people on Twitch. Yeah, definitely. Oh, the Sit Rep Cup. Sending the B-52s, right? <laughs> uh, a risk any mug check. Um, yeah, so the Sit Rep Cup, we are going to give out uh, a little award. So Gianna's going to find an STL file and print out an award cup. And uh, that's going to be awarded to the winning player of our upcoming American Revolution game. And I think the loser is going to have some humiliating task to do. Like, I think if Gaz loses, he has to drink uh, sweet tea, which he abhors. Um, it's not real British tea. It's American nasty tea. And if the American player loses, I actually don't know if we ever decided on that. May have to drink, like, some proper British tea. Who knows? We'll figure it out. Um, but, guys, thanks for once more time uh, for coming out to our stream. And, of course, for all the support that we get on uh, SidRep. We are on Discord, Facebook, Podbean, YouTube, Twitch. Man, we're all over the place. Uh, we have a thread and a project... Uh, thread always going over on on tabletop as well so check us out there um and again if you guys have any ideas uh about what kind of stuff you want us to cover let us know